One of the greatest dangers to your preterm baby may be a preventable virus called RSV. Come right back to learn more. RSV is the leading cause of re-hospitalization in all children less than 12 months of age. Premature infants are susceptible and vulnerable to this terrible virus. Therefore, it's important for parents to take precaution. Dr. Sermista Hager from Dell Children's Medical Center joins us with more information. RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus, and respiratory syncytial virus is the cause of a very frequent infection in babies and children actually under the age of five. The RSV infection is an infection of the upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract. To a large extent, the signs and symptoms of that infection depends on your previous exposure to it. It's an interesting infection because you can get infected with it over and over again. Just because you've had it one time doesn't mean that you can't get it again. The issue is how you respond the first time you get the infection. RSV infection actually can occur all throughout your lifetime, but certain populations, certain ages are at highest risk. And for children, most children are infected by age two. Amongst that, there are lots of vulnerable populations, and those are especially the children that are preterm, that can be born up to 35 weeks of age, gestation, children with congenital heart disease, children with chronic lung disease, children with immunosuppression, certain children sometimes with other factors that can affect their breathing or their lung function, cardiac function, etc but really the preterm infants are the highest risk for this infection. And the reason that they're at highest risk for this infection is because of their immune system, which is so vulnerable, as well as their lung anatomy just hasn't had time to develop in, and uh, develop into a more of a functional system by the time this infection can happen. So children that are at the greatest risk really are those that are fallen to those groups that are born on, at the time that this virus um, infects or affects our population, which happens seasonally. It happens every year in the winter months. It usually happens somewhere around November, usually lasts until around March or April. RSV is an important virus in the wintertime for multiple reasons. It's spread from child to child, so hence um, children that attend um, child care centers, daycare centers where there's other children that may be ill are at, are at risk for RSV. In addition, children that reside in homes that are smokers, where there are smokers or their smoke has, it's been shown that smoking is an a risk factor for many infections, not just RSV. Children with other siblings at home who can bring home things may have also an, a bit of an increased risk for RSV. The other thing is that this virus can uh, also be on environmental sources, you, as, such as toys. The first thing you should do if you thought your baby had RSV is take your baby to the doctor. It is easily tested for in most situations. And in many situations, the diagnosis can be given to you within a few hours. Hospitalization is not always necessary. We reserve hospitalizations really for the sickest babies, the babies that are either have underlying problems that I mentioned, or are already in trouble with breathing difficulty, low oxygen levels. The question of trying to prevent this infection is a very important one because it really is one of the few viral infections that we can do something about to prevent. There is a substance which is uh, an antibody uh, response against this virus and this substance is called Synergis. It is given annually in our country. It is given to babies that, that, vulnerable, that are vulnerable and are at highest risk, and it's given at usually five doses. The question was, what can you do as a parent if you feel that your child should qualify for this substance and you're denied by your insurance company? I think your greatest advocate really is your doctor. Um, your doctor should determine whether your child falls into those high-risk criteria. It is a very expensive resource and there can be times when the physicians can go to bat for their, for their patients and can all um, insurance companies have people that you can speak with and um, explain your issues, but your physician should be your greatest advocate for that.
The Centers for Disease Control always has good patient in, um, education information about various infections and RSV is definitely uh, one of those. You, the Centers for Disease Control is one good um, site to get seasonal uh, epidemiologic updates as well as some uh, practical things to do to, to care for your child, etc. American Academy of Pediatrics also has a very good website. Casey Matthews, mom to Andy, born at 25 weeks gestation, joins us to tell her personal story of Andy's rehospitalization at age two with RSV. Our daughter had been born unexpectedly premature. That first fall when she was home, she received two shots, preventative shots of Synergis, one in November, one in December. In January, my husband's insurance company changed and the employer changed companies, and we were told that by this next company that the synergist wasn't necessary and that they were not going to provide this for our daughter Andy. So we, we fought the insurance company, our doctor wrote letters. Um, it was quite a trial, and after days, which turned into weeks, they finally agreed, and she received the preventative shots for the rest of that winter. The following year, when flu and, flu and RSV season was upon us, my husband and I both agreed there wasn't any sense even trying to get her the shots because we knew the insurance company would absolutely deny it after everything we'd been through the year before when she was one. And now she was two and she was doing beautifully and they would have told us that she wasn't at risk at all. And we believed that. So the grandparents were going to come for the weekend, and it was the week before we were due to leave, and Andy started rubbing her ear, and she had a little bit of a sniffle, and I thought, uh-oh, we don't want her to have a cold while we're gone, so I took her into the doctor, and as soon as the nurse came in, the first thing she did was put Andy's finger in the ox pulse meter to measure her breathing rate, and her eyes went wide, and my heart sunk, and next thing, a whole bunch of nurses were running in the room. The doctor who we had seen earlier that week came running in. A uh, mask was put over Andy's nose and mouth. And I said, is this another medical emergency? And they said, yes. The nasal swab has shown that yes, it is RSV. My knees buckled and then we all looked over at the bed where Andy was hooked up to oxygen and he said, it's, it's going to be up to her whether she chooses to beat this or not. And I panicked and I ran down the hall and I ran out of the hospital and I called everybody in my family and I said, Andy has RSV and the doctor says she might not make it. Everybody in my family was now panicked and they're all trying to get to us on planes. And once we were in the ICU, uh, Andy was put into a, um, a room where she was the only one in there. It was, there were four, but she was, it's a quarantine RSV room. And throughout the night, she continued to get um, nebulizer treatments with albuterol and palmacord and pumping just pure oxygen right into her. And there was a, a little incident with the nurse where she told me that I couldn't stay in the bed with her and I absolutely would hear nothing otherwise and that I was not taking my hands off of her. So I had to sign a special release, which I did, and I stayed in the bed with her all night. And my husband went home and got our son, and they came back first thing in the morning, and we just surrounded Andy and just kept putting that oxygen into her and begging her to fight, fight, fight this RSV, saying, you have to stay, you have to stay with us. And she got better. It took a couple days, but she improved. And we left that hospital with the nebulizer and pulmacort and albuterol. And we, we didn't leave RSV behind. It, it followed us home. And, and every time she was sick, just the slightest cold, boom. It was like she fell right off a cliff. And we were right back. Um, she was never re-hospitalized, but it was always close. She, um, she would just end up so sick. And her lungs were so damaged and they call it RSV echoes and you know I call it just sheer tear because the physical effects lingered for years but the emotional effect lingered on and on and on to this day where I never quite let down my guard 
I'm always still so afraid. So afraid that she's going to be taken from us. And it's, it's a difficult way to live. And I wouldn't want to wish that on anybody. I am Kelly Kelly, founder and executive director of Hand to Hold. We provide comprehensive navigation services and support programs for parents of preemies, babies born with special health care needs, and those who have experienced a loss due to these or other complications. We provide support both during the NICU stay and beyond the hospital doors. For more information about RSV or important information about issues pertaining to your premature child, please visit our website at www.handtohold.org. Thank you so much for joining us, and a very special thank you to MedImmune and St. David's Foundation for supporting this very important project.